Hey guys, so on today's video we have a list of 5 different Dodge Challenger concept vehicles that I wanted to dig up and share with you, all of them just a single copy produced by Chrysler themselves. We'll start with the original concept in 2006 and then move up chronologically from there. Whatever I don't cover in today's video will be looked at in part 2. Hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get on with it. So the first concept on my list today was simply called the Dodge Challenger concept, unveiled at the 2006 Detroit Motor Show. It was essentially a preview of the real Challenger which was to be released 2 years later, the Challenger had not been seen since 1983, but that was more of a rebadged Mitsubishi built in Japan. The original Challenger was produced from 1970 to 1974 in both a two-door hardtop and convertible, so this concept was coming out about 32 years after that. The Challenger concept took styling cues from the 1970 Challenger RT because the designers felt this was the purest and least embellished model. They actually brought a 1970 Challenger in the studio when they were designing it. The designers had a lot of heritage to look back on, but they knew they had to get this design right. Many people were unhappy with the 2006 Dodge Charger design because it was a four-door sedan and the Chrysler headquarters in Detroit actually got flooded with letters of complaint from the public once they saw that new design. Of course, years later, it's pretty much okay. But uh, as for this one, there were actually two competing designs for the Challenger concept, but the designers determined that they were more sport car than muscle car, and the concept prevailed. The concept was built on a shortened version of the LX platform, called the LC, in carbon fiber by a company called Metal Crafters, who made a lot of the Chrysler concepts, and it weighed in at 4,160 pounds. Like the original, there are two doors, but the hood and deck lid are higher. They wanted to keep the wide look of both the front and rear end of the original, so to do this they widened the axle track to 64 inches in the front and 65 in the rear, so that's wider than the other LX models, and even 2 inches wider than the original, so it gives the concept a nice wide stance. Of course, the wheelbase of the Challenger was also 4 inches shorter than the other LX models, since it was a coupe, so it went down from 120 inches to 116.2 inches, taking that out of the rear legroom. Overall, the 1970 Challenger was 191 inches long with a 110 inch wheelbase, and the concept was 198 inches long with a 116.2 inch wheelbase. The concept had a crosshair grille up front, and the back had a full width neon lit taillight. The hood had functional twin diagonal scoops that acted as butterfly valve air intakes, and the exhaust had twin rectangle tips. They also gave the concept carbon fiber black racing stripes, Challenger lettering on the rear quarter panel, Dodge lettering on the taillight, and it was painted in orange pearl. Moving inside, the interior was meant to have a very simplistic design with more 1970s cues mixed in. There are black leather seats with an orange band in the center and big side bolsters. Those didn't make it to the production version. The rib seats pay homage to the original. Satin silver accents do complete the look as well. There are three gauges in the instrument panel, accompanied by one larger gauge on the left side, and that bigger gauge was the computer, which could show you different stats like top overall speed and quarter mile time. Dodge says that, quote, We designed the in-your-face gauge holes to appear as if you were looking down into the engine cylinders with the head off, end quote. The leather-wrapped steering wheel has a three-spoke design, and the center stack faces towards the driver with a pistol grip shifter. Onto the powertrain, the engine is the 6one liter V8 Hemi that now feels familiar after all these years. This gives the Challenger 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque, and the only transmission planned was a 6-speed manual. The concept could hit 0-60 in 4.5 seconds, quarter mile in 13 seconds flat, and hit a top speed of 174 miles per hour, so that's similar performance to the production SRT8. As for the wheels, they were a 5-spoke chrome design, staggered with 20-inch rims up front and 21 in the rear. The designers kept trying to bring back the classic Rally wheel, but they claimed that it didn't fit right with the current design, so they weren't used. The rotors were drilled, helping the concept stop from 60 to 0 miles per hour and 133 feet, and the multi-link independent rear suspension and strut front suspension would carry over from the other SRT LX models. So obviously this concept was similar to the production version, just with some minor changes. I don't mind either of them, but to me the production version just seems a little more polished and it looks a bit better. Before the days of the current drag focus challengers like the Drag Pack, RT Scat Pack 1320, or the SRT Demon, Mopar came out with this super stock concept, fully customized for the 2006 SEMA show. This would mark the introduction of the 392 Hemi Crate motor to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the engine. Of course, 15 years in the future, Dodge would reuse the super stock name on a 2021 model with 807 horsepower. The super stock body was similar to the first concept, all carbon fiber with the same crosshair grille and full width neon taillight, but it featured a patriotic American paint scheme. Of course, the major feature was the 392 Hemi V8 crate, and in the concept it was good for 525 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque, paired with a 3-speed automatic that was built for drag racing. There were a total of 3 different 392s released with varying output. Gone was the independent rear suspension of the Challenger, replaced with a Dana 60 rear axle. 
It also had 10-inch Goodyear Eagle drag slicks and line lock, which wouldn't feature on a production vehicle until 12 years later with the 2018 Challenger Demon. The Superstock was taken for a run at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in April of 2007, and it was able to hit the quarter mile in just 11.53 seconds at 114 miles per hour. Before the Hellcat was even a possibility, the SRT team was exploring other ways to get the Challenger up over 5 or 600 horsepower. At the time of its release in 2008, the SRT8 was the top dog, with 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque, the most powerful vehicle in the Dodge lineup, behind the Viper. While the Challenger was known for coming with a Hemi, for this concept, it was swapped with a Viper 8.4 liter V10, making 600 horsepower and 560 pound-feet of torque, paired with the Tremec TR 6060 6-speed manual transmission. That routed the torque through a single-piece 4-inch steel drive shaft to an all-aluminum differential with a 3.73 to 1 final drive ratio and torque-sensing limited slip. The engine wasn't the only modification here though. First, the car got a beautiful tornado red paint job and some unique changes to the appearance, like a carbon fiber hood and deck lid to reduce a bit of weight, and a carbon fiber splitter and rear spoiler for aerodynamic purposes, enhancing downforce and balance. A shaker hood was added as well, which is also found on some of today's Challengers, allowing the engine to breathe better. Other performance parts were beefed up to handle the extra power. The whole suspension was retuned with a multi-link short and long arm suspension in the front with Bilstein monotube shocks. The rear had a 5-link independent suspension with 20% stiffer springs and a larger rear sway bar. To help put the power down better, the SRT team also put on wider wheels than would be found on the SRT8, 20 by 9 inches up front with 275, 35, 20 Pirelli P0s, and then 20 by 10s in the back with the same size tires. Beneath the wheels were massive Brembos, 6 piston calipers up front with 15.4 inch rotors, and 4 pistons in the rear with 14 inch rotors. Inside was also race inspired with red striped and stitched leather seats, carbon fiber accents, and a red push button starter from the Viper. This was a crazy concept at the time in 2008, but just 7 years later, the production Challenger would arrive with 107 more horsepower than this thing, so you could say that this opened the door to the horsepower wars from Dodge. However, those Hellcats never got that Viper V10. Also unveiled at the 2008 SEMA show was a competition car that was built to compete at the Targa Newfoundland race in Canada, which is an annual rally race event that covers 2,200 kilometers over 7 days in September. So Mopar called this vehicle the Challenger Targa, giving it the nickname of Samantha, and the car began its life as a Mopar Challenger drag race package vehicle. The first thing to notice is the snakeskin green paint that was taken from the Viper to give the Targa a very unique look and Dodge would later offer a green with envy color on the 2011 RT Classics and SRT8s that was limited to just 1,532 vehicles. There's also a huge hood scoop to fit the engine, and a chin spoiler that was specially designed in a wind tunnel, and the entire hood has been blacked out, and there's also a matching black stripe on the side of the body. Inside you can find special Mopar gauges. Of course, performance was the main objective of this vehicle for the rally race. So under the hood, there was a 392 Hemi crate engine, this one with 540 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque, hooked up to a 6-speed Tremec manual transmission. The Dodge Viper ACR parts were used and upgraded by KW, including the race suspension. And StopTech would provide the big brake kit with 15-inch front rotors and 6-piston calipers, and 14-inch rotors in the rear with 4-piston calipers. The Chrysler Vice President of Design, Ralph Shields, drove the car at the race with co-driver Karen Wagner, and the Targo would finish 2nd in his class and 22nd overall. So now we've reached our final model of the video, which is the 2009 Blacktop concept. Of course, the Blacktop package is now a mainstay for the Dodge Challenger SXT, and I believe RT as well. It's a $1,295 option on the 2020 models, and it comes with a lot of blacked out pieces, like 20 by 8 inch black noise wheels, fuel filler door, grill badges, and even a 3.07 axle ratio. But long before that, there was a 2009 Dodge Challenger blacktop concept created by Mopar Underground and brought to the SEMA show. Unfortunately, there aren't too many pictures to show you, I found what I could, but the team took a Challenger RT and would add some great looking visual modifications. First off, the name comes from the black on black scheme with dual racing stripes on top of the black paint. 
A bright red accent line runs along the side of the body and all around the grille, and they added a custom made chin spoiler. The car is dropped with a Mopar coilover kit, and along with that there are 22 inch black Dodge Viper wheels that give the car a very menacing wide stance, and the wheels have a red ring that wraps around them to match the side of the car. The tires are nice and wide, 265-35-22s in the front, and 305-30-22s in the rear. On the inside there are beautiful catskin leather seats that are finished in bright red, and a Mopar kicker audio system has been added. As for the performance, the black top came with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 and a 6 speed manual transmission. Mopar didn't add too much, just a strut tower brace, cat back exhaust, and cold air intake. So this black top challenger was a relatively simple look that was just done perfectly in my opinion, looking absolutely incredible, especially back for 2009. So that's the end of this video guys, and remember there will be a part 2 covering the rest of the challenger concepts. Which concept was your favorite out of these 5 Dodge Challengers? I personally love the look and performance of the SRT10. Chrysler has definitely transformed some cool ideas into reality and brought a few awesome vehicles to life. And also if you like concept car videos like this, I've done the same videos for the Chrysler 300 and Dodge Charger so make sure to check those out in the top right corner. So thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for a lot more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.